Thanks for joining us today. We love to hear how God is using this ministry in your life. So we encourage you to share your story with us at info at fellowshipgj.com or by clicking the Share Your Story tab on the Church Center app. Also, if God is using this ministry to impact you, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially. You can do that by clicking on the giving link located in the description of this video, online at fellowshipgj.com, or if you're a member here at Fellowship Church, you can give through our Church Center app. This will help us continue to bring the message of Christ to our community and beyond. Again, thank you for joining us and enjoy today's service. Good morning, church, and welcome. Aren't you so thankful that we don't have to have it all together, but we serve a God who holds it all together? In fact, in the Bible, it says that his power works best in my weakness, so I will boast about my weakness. I will boast about my God because it's his strength. It's not mine. It's his courage. It's not mine. It's his joy, not mine. So we are going to praise, and we're going to worship. Come on, put your hands together. Rejoice and be glad in it. This is where I believe. Come on, that you are more than enough, more than enough for me. Yes, you are faithful. You are faithful to your promise. You are strong when I am weak, when I'm standing.
Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you for your heart for us. Thank you for not just your sacrifice, God, but your unrelenting love, protection, provision. All we can offer you is our gratitude. Jesus, we lift those up to you. We say thank you, God. And we ask you, God, we invite you into even deeper portions of the room, of our hearts, of our minds. God, would you influence our minds and our thoughts and our hearts? God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you want us to see, what you want us to hear. Prepare a heart for the message today. Jesus, you are what everything is about. So as we seek first your kingdom, God, we know and we trust everything else will be added unto us. We worship you, God, not for the things you do and the things you've done, the things you said, but because of who you are. You are holy, you are righteous, and we thank you, Jesus. So Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with us, prepare our hearts and minds. We love you, God, in your heavenly name. All right, give him one more shout of praise. He's so good. He's so good. For those of you that are in person with us, find somebody, give them a high five. Tell them they look good today. Make them feel welcome. For those of you that are at home tuning in with us, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We'd love to hear how the message, how worship, anything, how it impacts you. So engage with us in the comments or there on YouTube or Facebook or our website. We'd love to hear from you. Your story matters, whether it's your first time with us or you've been with us for a long time, or maybe you're just out and you're normally here, but you're out visiting somewhere. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to hear from you. And if you are online and you need some prayer, navigate yourself over to our website. We got somebody online right now ready to pray with you. You matter. We want you to know that. If you're in person with us or if you're online and you would consider yourself a guest or visitor or you're newer, or maybe you finally just want to plug in a little bit, meet some staff, meet some people, and see if there's a group or class or some, something that you could maybe sign up for um, and, and connect, help our big church feel a little smaller, just get your, your smartphone out and text the word fellowship to the number 94,000. As soon as you do that, you get in contact with our staff, get an invitation to our guest reception. But above everything else, we're, we're able to hear your story a little bit. And if you are in person and you're a newer um, a guest or visitor, drop by the info center. We'd love to hear your story. You fill a little info card. We'll give you a, a free gift bag and a specialty drink from our coffee shop. We want to be able to, um, yeah, get to know you a little bit. You matter. And we want to um, just, yeah, again, help our big church feel a little bit smaller because it can be easy to be nameless and faceless in a, in a larger room, and we don't want that um, for, for anybody. God says from the cross that we are worth it, and I think it's important. So if you're a guest or visitor, welcome. We're happy to have you here. We're going to continue the worship of our awesome, amazing God through the giving of tithes and offerings. There's a lot of different ways to give here. We have the Church Center app, which is my favorite. Uh, We also have uh, the text to give. We have the offering boxes in the lobby. Um, And, of course, drop by during the week. We'd love to see you as well during the week. As I was thinking about generosity and giving, I was reminded of uh, an experience. It's kind of, it's fall. We can feel that now. It's a little bit colder um, but a few weeks ago, I was scouting for a hunting trip, and we were trying to see if this area is good. And I don't know if you've ever been hiking on a trail, or maybe even driving down a road, and all of a sudden, like the trail or the road before you just kind of disappears a little bit. And you get that sinking feeling in your heart of like, I'm, I know I'm not lost, but I'm lost, you know? And for the three of us, uh, I was with Pastor Sean and another friend of ours, and we're trying to figure out, we know where we want to get to, because we can see it like way down the mountain, but the how to get there has been tough. And maybe even you've experienced that somewhere in your life where you're like, I know where I need to get, but how to get there is, is not, um, it's just not clear. And we were hiking through this oak brush, and if you've ever been familiar with oak brush, it's from Satan, I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> it is like... It's not very tall. It's these little oak trees that just grab a hold of everything that you have. Um, They pick your pockets, you know, throughout the whole time. And you have to duck really low. And, of course, we had our bags on and everything like that. And we are trying to figure out how to get down the mountain to the other section of trail because we couldn't, we didn't have time to backtrack. So 
as we're doing that, we're in the middle of this oak brush, which is super thick. You only can see just a couple yards in front of you. And we find this little piece of ribbon that someone had tied to a branch. And for those of you that are, are familiar, that means that someone else tied that there to mark a trail. And when we found ribbon, we were like, yes, <laughs> ribbon. Now, it would be really funny if somebody was like a adjacent mountain just watching us. Because every about, uh, I don't know, five minutes, you'd hear one of us yell, Ribbon! And then all of us were like, yeah! And we'd run over to that guy, and then we'd lose it, and then we'd find it again. And it's just, it was, we got down the mountain, but uh, thank goodness nobody was like, you know, tying a ribbon in a big circle. Um, <laughs> that would be so messed up. <laughs> but what was interesting about that, and I think there's a couple things in Scripture that can be that ribbon for us, that helps us find our way when we can't see in front of us. And I know when we're struggling financially, it can be so traumatic not to know, I know where I want to be, but how do I get there? And I think there's two things in Scripture that becomes that ribbon for us when we're in the middle of the oak brush of of a hard financial situation. uh, Thankfulness and gratitude for sure, and then generosity would be those things that uh, it's like helping find our way through. And I know it takes a lot of faith to be generous in a season where it's tough to be, or if you're in that spot and, and, you, and you're ready to, to really pour out and, and start giving back, whether it's through financial means or um, by other means of time and resources, it's super valuable to be able to do that. And so uh, I wanted to encourage you with that as well as pray over the tithes and offerings coming in and pray over anybody that is just in financial stress or, or need today. So Jesus, thank you, God, for, number one, your provision, for the little pieces of ribbon you put in our life. God, we're so grateful for that. And Jesus, I pray that generosity is a way that you lived your life, and it's an honor to follow in your footsteps there. So Jesus, I pray that you can work in our hearts um, in ways to be more generous and to be able to live the the life that that you lived as well. And God, thank you, God, for um, opportunities to do that. And I pray for anybody who's in financial stress or worry, Lord, would you... Just pour out your blessings on them. God, we are so grateful um, when you, you come close to us. And so, Jesus, because of that, giving is a way that we can love you back. So would you bless the tithes and offerings coming in? God, we love you, and we thank you in your name. Amen. All right, before we jump into the announcements, I just want to encourage everybody again. Pastor Senior talked about it last week, too, that the we're, it's two weeks to go in this election, and there's there's... Voting to happen, it's crazy when he talked about the statistics of there are millions and millions and millions of Christians that that don't vote each year. And I think that it's super important for us to, number one, pray for our leadership, pray for our um, communities as well as our nation overall. But also it's important to be able to get to that place. When we vote, we're also expressing gratitude to the men and women who've died for our country. And I think that's an easy way to just go, you know what, I can can do that. So no matter, you know, who you're voting for, whatever, I think it's important to just know that, like, man, our, our country needs to be prayed for. Our, our leadership needs to be um, prayed for and, and talked to, especially about the, by, or especially talked to on the king of kings and the creator of the universe, to talk to him about what's going on. I think that's super important. So make sure you get out there. Make sure you vote in a couple weeks as well as pray, 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 pray for our country, for our community, um, and, and everything else going on in our world. There's a lot of different things coming up here at Fellowship Church, especially over the fall season. Here are a few of them. We all deal with life's hurts, habits, hangups, and addictions. God's plan and design for our lives wasn't to feel burdened and weighed down. He wants us to be free. Celebrate Recovery is a ministry here at Fellowship that can help. No one has the ability to face our hurts on our own. Celebrate Recovery is a place where you can receive support, encouragement from other believers who are also in recovery. Celebrate Recovery meets every Monday night at 6 p.m. You can sign up on the Church Center app or just show up. We'd love to see you there. Our mission here at Fellowship is to connect the unconnected to Jesus and together go in full devotion to Him. We believe there is always a next step for anyone who would call themselves a follower of Jesus. And the truth is, we are all on a journey toward God in our lives. For some of us, our next step is connecting with God regularly and connecting with others here on Sundays. For others, it is growing our faith through classes and groups that meet throughout the week. For some people, it's just taking that next step and following Jesus as a servant and volunteering somewhere in our ministry. And then finally, we can take the next step of expressing our relationship with Jesus outwardly through leading, giving, and sharing life with others. No matter where you are in your walk, we're here to help. You can click the Next Steps tab on the Church Center app or stop by the counter on the east side of the lobby. 
Baptism is coming up on November 17th. Baptism is a perfect next step in a believer's life and a great place to see God working in others' lives as we get to see believers come together to publicly declare their faith in Jesus. Baptism is not required for salvation, but is a crucial part of our walk with Jesus. Our baptism takes place after the second service in 4640. If you're feeling led to build your faith through baptism, feel free to invite your friends and family to take part. You can sign up on the events tab of the Church Center app or drop by the info center if you have any questions. We're glad you're here today. We hope you enjoy the last week of our series, That One Hurt. Last week of that one hurt. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series because we've been on quite a journey together. You go back to the first week when we talked about resentment and bitterness and, and how we need to move through, through those seasons in our life. We talked about the weight of life and, and when sometimes things hit us, it feels like the weight can be crushing, but how God can help us with that weight. We talked about living through loss and, and getting up again and forgiving. But this morning, what we want to talk about to end this series is we want to talk about how to have peace in the midst of the hurt. Because the hurt's hard enough. The hurt is hard enough to deal with, not to mention all the emotions that can come with that hurt. So what we want to do is we understand the hurt is going to come. We want to make sure that when it does, we handle it with God's grace and we handle it with peace because hurt will come. Physical hurt, emotional hurt. I mean, and there's so many things that are happening around us right now in this world that are potentially hurtful. Now, I love the fact that Scripture is filled with prophecy. And Jesus talks about the days that we're living in now, 2,000 years ago. In Luke 21, verse 25, he says, And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. And I don't know if you notice or not, but it seems like every month there is something going on with the moon. It's a super blue moon. It's, it's a red blood moon. There's something going on with, 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 uh, with, with planets and planet alignment and, and all of these things, more so than I've ever seen and we've ever seen in our entire lives. So, so yes, we're seeing those signs. And on earth, distress of nations, the Bible says. And there's distress among nations right now. You can't turn on TV with, uh, without the war or rumor of wars breaking out or, or the fact that there's, there's so many wars that are happening all over the planet. The Bible says, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now, this is literally happening, and we've seen this happen in Florida over the last month, haven't we? But this also is symbolic because in the Bible, the sea is a, Bible, or the, the sea is a symbol of people. Verse 26, it says, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming, which is simply afraid of the future. People are afraid of the future. They're afraid of what's going to happen in this next election. They're afraid what is going to happen with the economy. They're afraid of what's going to happen to the value of their home and their, and, and, and their job. I mean, there's, there are, there's a sense of fear of the future. And then the scripture says, on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, here's the great thing for us. The next verse says, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up. And lift up your heads. So when the things that we are seeing happen and we get discouraged right now, lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. These signs are great for believers because it means that Jesus is coming back soon. Romans 14, 17, and the New King James says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And we need to understand something. We need to understand that our level of peace is determined by our proximity to Jesus. Not in our ability to avoid harm or in trying to protect ourselves from hurt. So that's a lot of times that's what we do. We take things in our own hands. We try to control situations. We try to say, you know what, I'm just going to avoid harm. I'm not going not to trust anymore. I'm going I'm to build some walls around me to try to protect myself. I'm going to protect myself from harm. But 
the truth is, is that it's really about how close we are to the Lord. We can know Jesus and still not have peace. But the closer we are walking with Jesus, the more peace that is possible in our lives. The more we cultivate our relationship, the more peace that we're going to have. Romans 15, 13 says, now, bay, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So may God give us hope and joy and peace. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. So those things come from the Holy Spirit. Peace doesn't come naturally for us. Certain personality types don't really go well with peace. Mine in particular. If you're a type A personality, if you have choleric tendencies in your life, then peace is something that is going to be a struggle for you. We're not just born with it. Peace comes from the Holy Spirit. And he gives his peace to anyone who asks, especially people like me. Like, I don't have it naturally. I need it from God, and I have to ask for it. Isaiah 9, 6 says that he is the prince of peace. Hebrews 6, 20 says Jesus has become the high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. And you say, well, Melchizedek, what is that all about? Well, Hebrews 7, 2 tells us that Melchizedek means king of Salem. Salem means peace. Jeru means city of so Jerusalem means city of peace. So according to scripture, Jesus is the king of peace and will rule forever from the city of peace. God is the God of peace. Jesus is the prince of peace and the king of peace. But we need to remember that God will never use fear in our life. He's not going to do that. He's not going to try to scare us into doing something, scare us into submission. He always uses fear. Peace. And Satan wants to keep us from that, right? He wants us to. So especially in the days that we live in now, especially when we're trying to navigate hurt. If you have peace, he wants to take it from you. If you don't have it, he wants to keep you from it. That's what the devil wants. He wants to steal your peace or he wants to keep you from peace. But peace is the promise to every believer. It's our birthright. John 14, 27 and 28, this is a scripture where Jesus is, is talking to his disciples before his death. And he knows. I mean, can you imagine? He's sitting down with his best friends. He's tried to tell them over and over again what's to come. They don't want to believe it because they don't, want to, they don't even want to have to handle the hurt. So they're in this denial stage. And he talks to them. And, he, and he's trying to encourage them. He's trying to make them feel better. And in verse 27, he says, peace... I leave with you. So of all the things that Jesus could give the disciples, right before his death, he says, I'm going to give you peace. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said that I am going to the Father for my father is greater than I. So he's trying to tell him. He's trying to say, hurt, hurt is coming. Hurt is coming for me. Hurt is coming for you. But I want to trade your hurt for peace. I'm going to tell you where I'm going and where you're eventually going to go so that you don't have to experience the hurt. Instead, you can experience peace. You see, when we really can try to wrap our mind around the fact that this is just a stopping place for us. We are not of this world. And the worst thing that can happen is that we die and then we end up going to heaven. That's the way Jesus wanted us to look at it. He wanted us to say, he wanted us to see, hey, look, I'm going to a better place. I'm going to go prepare that very place for you to come someday too. We were designed by God, physically designed by God, to live in an atmosphere of peace. Your body has to live in peace to be healthy. Do you know that? Our body does best when we're in peace. If you don't have peace in your life, you're going to begin to have all kinds of physical problems. 
the number one reason for doctor office visits in America is due to stress. Did you know that? The number one reason for prescribed medications in America is stress. If any group of people need peace, it's American people. Jesus gave peace to us as a gift until he returns. We just have to embrace it. Now, here's the importance of walking in peace with God. Number one, peace is how God guides us. He guides us with peace. Colossians 3.15 says, And then let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and, and, and be thankful. Now, it's interesting, but rule in this text means to umpire or give us situational guidance. I love that. So, and, and let the peace of God rule. Let it, let it be the umpire. Let it guide you. Let it give you situational guidance in your hearts. Peace is designed to give you guidance in, every way, in everyday life. And I'm not talking about decisions of whether something is right or wrong, because we should know that. We should know if something's right or wrong. I'm talking about the decisions we have to make on a daily basis between right and right. What car should I buy? What house should I buy? What should my major be in college? Who should I date? There are many decisions in life that the Bible does not talk about. How do I make those decisions? Well, you pray, and then you wait on God's peace. So I've told this story before many times from this platform. But one of the, one of the first times I really experienced this, early on in life, I was 21 years old, and I, we just got married. Uh, Rebecca and I just got married. And we were starting our life off our family together, and God called me back to Colorado. We were living in Louisiana at the time, and that's a big move. Now, I had family here, but that was 1,500 miles away, and I didn't, we were both broke. We barely had any money. We worked really hard, but we didn't make much, but those years that we tried to skimp and, and save, we had gotten to a point where we had $860 in our savings account. That was a big deal. And I remember, like, just talking to the Lord about this. I'm like, God, I really feel like you're calling me to Colorado. I really feel like you're, you're wanting to do something in Colorado in our lives. And so, you know, I, but I just don't know. I want to make sure. I want to make sure. And I just thought, well, you know, the first thing I need, I, need to, I need to see if we even have enough money to make the move. And so I called my bank, found out I had $863, and then I called a U-Haul company. And I said, I need a U-Haul this size, and then I need it to have a little car carrier to, to carry our car. How much is that going to be if we get to Cortez, Colorado, which is where my parents were living at the time? And I am not lying when I tell you that that person says $863. Now, some of you go, and you moved, Right? The old, you didn't have anything left. But in that moment, God gave me a peace. He gave me a peace to know, I got you. I got you. I know what you need. I've always been there for you in the past. This is my call in your life. Have, tr have faith in me. And I had such a peace in that moment that I knew that that's what God was calling me to do. When you're making a decision, especially a big one, that you should feel nervous about, and instead you feel peace, you know that that's from God, and you know it's the right thing. If God is saying no, you won't have peace. You may feel anxious, you may feel nervous, you may feel scared, you may feel apprehensive, and they're two completely different feelings that are very distinguishable. And so many times when, when, when somebody asks, they're like, you know, I just don't know what to do in this situation, and, and my first response is always, have you prayed about it? Yes, I've prayed about it. How do you feel after you pray about it? Well, I just feel a peace. There you go. All right. Oh, no, I just feel anxiety and I just don't, I don't feel, I feel heavy. I don't, okay, then that's not the decision you need to make. So God uses peace to guide us. Secondly, peace is how God protects our hearts and minds against Satan's attacks of fear and anxiety. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 say, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, the word guard in this scripture comes from the Greek word phroreo, which means to protect by military guard to prevent a hostile invasion. I, I love that. I love that. Which surpasses all understanding, will guard. It, 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 it's going to be guarded like a military guards an opponent that's trying to invade our heart. Now, anxiety, most of the time, is our fault. Let's just be honest, okay? I know that many times we'll, we'll, we struggle with anxiety. We have anxiety in us, and we're just like, oh, I don't feel like feeling this way. We have, to, we have to accept the fact that many times it's our fault because we're allowing things to come into our mind, causing us to worry about things that are completely out of our control. Why do we do that? Why do we try to control things that are uncontrollable? Why do, you, why do we think we make a difference at all about worrying about something, thinking that maybe we're controlling it in the process? If you think about it, we usually become anxious when we're trying to be God in our life and control things that only he can fix. When the peace of God is on us, the devil can't penetrate it because he is protecting our hearts militantly from a hostile invasion. Isn't that beautiful? So when you say, I trust you, God, give me your peace, you get this protection around your heart and your mind. And that protection is like, hey, stay out, devil, stay out. You can't invade this space because it is filled with peace. I just love that. I love that picture of what, what God does for us, how he defends us. Number three, Peace is a platform for our witness. Ephesians 6.15 says, and having shod your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace. Then NLT says, wear shoes that are able to speed you on as you preach the good news of peace with God. The peace in you is the tool to attract others to Jesus. You see, the world is looking for it. The world wants peace, and they'll look for it in money and possessions and relationships and drugs and food. You name it. Especially in today's society, people want peace. But if you don't know Jesus, you can't have it. Not completely. You may have little seasons of it. You may have just a, a bit of it from time to time. But you can't have the supernatural stuff. Have you ever had someone tell you that there's something different about you? Not in a weird way. I have people tell me that all the time. But, but in a spiritual way. Or, or asked you how you were able to handle whatever your stressful situation was at the time. Have you ever had that where they're like, with what you're going through, how are you handling this so well? Like, I would be freaking out. I would be going crazy. That, that's a witness. Your response in those storms of pain show Jesus to other people. It's a witnessing tool. Now, I've had the privilege over 35 years of ministry to do I don't know how many funerals, to do how, I don't know how many memorial services, or sit with people as they were going through hell in their life. I mean, I've had my hardships. I've had my struggles. I've had things in my life break loose that I didn't know that I could handle too. But, but there's been times where I've been sitting with families, and I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know how they're doing it. And I've seen the difference between a Christian going through turmoil and hurt and pain and those that are non-believers. The ones that know Lord, they know him, they have peace. Peace beyond all understanding. Peace that doesn't make sense. But then those that don't know Jesus, there's no peace. There's no hope. And I look at them and I go, oh, if you just knew Jesus. And that's the difference. And we can be a shining light, an example. We can be a testimony without even opening our mouth and talking about Scripture, but just by how we're acting in the midst of the storm. Matthew 5, 9 says, Happy are those who strive for peace. They shall be called the sons of God. Now, six foundations. We're going to move through this quickly, but there's, this, there's six foundations of peace. The, the first of which, in which we have to have, is a submission to Jesus. If we want peace, we have to submit. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, I love this scripture, for unto us is a child, a child is born. So I, uh, Isaiah, hundreds of years, is talking about the birth of Messiah. Uh, Messiah. Unto us a son is given, and, and a government shall be upon his shoulders. 
These will be his royal titles. Wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. His ever-expanding peaceful government will never end. He will rule with perfect fairness and justice from the throne of his father, David. He will bring true justice and peace to all the nations of the world. This is going to happen because the Lord of heaven's armies has dedicated himself to do it. So he's the one that's really elected king. Right? He's the one. He's, he's the president. He's the one that is in control of all things. He is wonderful. He is the counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. And so it's super important if he is our head, if he is our authority, that we come under his authority. We submit to his authority. M- many times we don't have peace or we're right in the middle of hurt because we aren't listening to him in the first place. We're coming against what he's already said in Scripture. We're doing things that, that bring us out from underneath God's cover and his protection. doesn't mean we're not saved. It just means that we're not as protected as we could be. So come under God's cover. Be under his obedience. Submit to him, and you will be under his peace. Many times we don't have peace because we're making bad choices. We're doing things against Scripture. So submit to him first. So anything in your life that you know you're not doing right, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Help me to do better. That's all you have to do to come back under his submission. Number two, consistent faith-filled prayer. Pretty simple. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what your needs. And don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, so you pray and tell him your needs, and you thank him when he comes through. If you do this, you will experience God's peace. Wow. It's right there in, in black and white which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. Without faith prayer, without faith prayer, you're just griping in the spirit. (laughs) Believe what you're praying. Ask for it. Pray without worrying and be thankful as you do it. Believe, I'm, I'm coming out of this, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to you, Lord, to transfer my problems. I'm going to give you my problems because you're the only one that can handle them. I'm going to quit trying to fix it myself. Scripture says, cast all your cares upon him. That means you throw that net, and then you just leave it. Cast it on him, and he's able to handle it. Number three, a godly mindset. Decide that you're not going to allow your mind to go to things that would steal your peace. If you lose peace, it always starts here. It does. You start thinking about things, it'll keep you up at night, right? You'll start thinking about things that, that you really don't need to be worrying about at all, but, but, and, but especially in the middle of the night, and then you can't go to sleep, and, and so you allow your mind just to run amok. Guys, we've got to decide, and like Scripture says, take the thought captive. I'm not going to think this. It doesn't line up with God's will for my life. I'm giving this to you, God. I'm going to bring this thought under your obedience. And here's the thing. Also, we've got to be careful what we watch. We've talked about that. Be careful what we listen to. Hey, if you want to get ticked off and just have a bunch of turmoil and your anxiety and anxiety in your life, just watch the news. That'll get you there real quick. If you like being mad, if you like being frustrated, just watch the debates. That'll get you there. That'll get you there, right? Just watching, watching that. I, guys, I have to turn it off. I have to get it turned off. And I have to say, God, you know what? I'm not going to watch this because you're ultimately in control. You got us. You always have had us. And we have read the end of the book. We know. We know what our destiny is. So I'm not going to allow the devil to steal one bit of my life. I'm not going to allow him to steal one bit of my peace because something I see or something that I hear. So watch that. Number four, bind any spirit, evil spirit, that would try to steal your peace. So we said earlier, the devil's going to try to keep you from peace. And if you have peace, he's going to try to take it from you. And he's going to try to take it from you by using his imps, his demons, to steal it from you. And, and you can't have peace if you have anxiety. You can't have peace if you have fear. You can't have peace if you have anger or frustration. And all of those things can come from the enemy. So bind him up in Jesus' name. I bind up the spirit of anxiety. Get it out of my life in Jesus' name. I bind up the spirit of anger. Get it out of my life. I'm not going to allow anger to steal my peace. Nobody wants to be angry and reject peace. 
except the devil wants that for you. So bind up those evil spirits. Number five, ask for the Holy Spirit to give you his peace. If that's where it comes from in the first place, just ask him to fill you with all of his fruits daily. Now, peace isn't enough for me. I still, I want love and joy. I want all of those other ones. I want self-control. I want goodness. I want all of those in my life. So ask the Holy Spirit for them. And then the number six, praise and worship. Isaiah 61 says, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who were bound, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Now, this is a prophecy, once again, about Jesus. Happened years and years before he was ever born. And it says that he gives us a garment of praise, that Jesus will give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Heaviness is the spirit of depression. It's discouragement and anxiety. And he wants you to trade him. He wants you to trade him praise for heaviness. Every day. Praise is described as a garment because he wants you to put it on every day. He wants you to wear it every day. You see the The problem with us is that we struggle with getting dressed. We do. And from a very young age, I mean, I remember my kids. They would always wear things that were inappropriate for where they were going. Lindsay would get ready for church dressed like Anakin Skywalker. And I would be like, Lindsay, you can't come to church as Anakin. Go put on appropriate clothes. Madeline would come out with the the fake high heels and the toy purse and the tutu. That's what she would come to church. And I Madeline... Let me help you get dressed for church. As adults, sometimes we need a reminder and we need a little help getting dressed. Because here's the thing. You can put on a garment of anxiety, depression, anger, fear. You can get up in the morning, you start your day wrong, and you're choosing the wrong garments. And God is saying, hey, wait, 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 wait. Let me trade those garments. Give those to me, and I'll, I'll trade them for praise. Praise and worship is such a beautiful way to start your day, to pick out your wardrobe. It prepares you. It gets your heart right. It gets your mind right. So as we end this morning, I want to do this. I, I want this worship time to minister to your soul. The words of this song, you've probably heard them before. Just take a moment and Holy Spirit, clear our minds, soften our hearts. Allow this worship to begin to trade garments, to prepare your heart, to prepare your mind, to get rid of the junk. Let it minister to you and get you ready for what God really wants you to feel, which is his peace.
close your eyes, and I just want you to picture whatever emotion that's been negative that you've been feeling on a daily basis, I want you to picture that. And then I want you to tell Jesus. I want you to ask Jesus, will you trade me? Will you trade me this this hopelessness that I felt? Will you trade me this worry that I wear? Will you trade me this depression that is, it's like a blanket in my life. Will you trade me that for praise? And immediately he says, yes. So mentally, I want you to just think about giving that over to him right now. I give you my, my worry, God. I give you my fear of the future give him my, my messed up finances. That's all I can think about. Trade me, Jesus. I give it over to you. I trade it for praise. And symbolically, let's end the service that way. Let's end this series that way. Praise him. Sing this verse and this chorus. whatever junk we have going on in our life for that. You said you'll trade us. You say you'll take it from us. So so do that, Lord. And give us the peace that passes all understanding in everything we face. That we'd be an example. That people would see us and go, what is different about you? And we can say, I know the Prince of Peace personally. Would you like to know him too? love you, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us peace. Even while the world may be falling apart, we know you have us. We love you. We thank you for all you're doing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to this week's message at Fellowship Church. If you have not yet made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. The Bible says in the book of Romans, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And you can do that right now. I just want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are Lord and that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose again. 
And God, I thank you for that. And I ask you now to be my savior, to guide my life and to give me a home forever in heaven. And God, I ask this in your precious son, Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, we would love to celebrate with you. So please text the word heaven to 94,000 to get in contact with one of our staff where we can answer any questions that you may have and you can share your story. And if this was your first time experiencing Fellowship Church, or if you have any questions and wanna learn any more about one of our ministries, you can text the word fellowship to 94,000 to connect with our staff. Also, if you are in need of prayer, we would love to support you in prayer. So you can submit your prayer request by texting the word prayer support to 94,000 and our prayer team will receive your request and immediately begin covering you in prayer. As always, we're still just a phone call away, so you can contact us at 970-245-PRAY or email us at info at fellowshipgj.com. Thanks again. We hope to see you next week in person or online.